Things are heating up both inside and outside of the lawsuit between Project Veritas in the New York Times. Project Veritas has sued the New York Times for defamation, something that is notoriously hard to do. Suing a news publication for defamation is extremely difficult due to the amount of First Amendment protection we give news organizations to faithfully report the news. That's what they're supposed to do. Not al always what they do, but that's what they're supposed to do, and that's the idea behind it. So they are to faithfully report the news, and as an exchange, they get a broad amount of protection to maybe get a thing wrong here or there. Of course, that changes when what they're doing is not getting something wrong, but flat out lying. They are still susceptible to defamation, but it is practically extremely difficult to do so. Project Veritas uncovered uh, a huge hurdle in that fight, and I covered this in a, in a recent video, where they passed New York's anti-slap laws and are now moving past the dismissal of this lawsuit and into the discovery phase. A discovery phase in which James O'Keefe has promised depositions of New York Times staff that they plan to broadcast to the world, so we are all eagerly awaiting what will happen. What's been happening inside the lawsuit was recently covered by Viva Fry, and since he did such a great job, I have no need to cover it further here. I will include a link to that video at the end of this video and down in the description. I highly, highly recommend you check it out. Viva is a great dude, great legal commentator, and he covers it excellently. So with that said, let's move on to what I'm going to talk about, and that is the recent hit piece that the New York Times did against Project Veritas, and it kind of seems to be retaliatory and in response to their victory at the uh, motion to dismiss stage, where they have passed that motion to dismiss and are now moving on to discovery. The New York Times is bearing its teeth. Let's take a peek here. I'm Nick Riqueda of Riqueda Law, a small law firm in central Minnesota. I'm a lawyer. I'm also a legal and political commentator on YouTube and on Odyssey. Wherever you're watching, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, make sure you have notifications and stuff on so you don't miss any videos. Here we go. James O'Keefe has fired back at the New York Times over hit piece on Project Veritas. Okay, so this is in the context of a defamation lawsuit that is ongoing. The New York Times has gone ahead and done a, another article on Project Veritas, this time accusing them of teaming up with a foreign spy to infiltrate and execute a sting operation against National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster. These are pretty, pretty bold allegations and serve to discredit Project Veritas, right? Working with a foreign agent to undermine national security concerns of the U.S. government. Of course, James O'Keefe has flatly and vehemently denied any involvement in this and uh, implicitly, I guess, is denying the involvement of Project Veritas, the organization. Now, New York Times has alleged that various Project Veritas staff members may have been involved in this. However, that appears to be, if even true, and who knows if you can trust the New York Times on reporting on Project Veritas, you can't. Who knows if you can trust them or not, but if true, this would appear to be their own extracurricular activities, I think is the way to put that, where they are not actually engaged in any way through Project Veritas in this. It's just that they have interests that overlap with whatever was going on. But we don't actually know because the New York Times cannot be trusted to accurately report on Project Veritas, especially when they seem to be doing so in retaliation for their uh, ongoing success in the defamation lawsuit. Now, Viva Fry has just covered their response, as I mentioned before, and again, check out his video on it, but some brief highlights from that response are major admissions that the New York Times was engaged in doing exactly what it accused Project Veritas of. And a rehash of that is that they accused Project Veritas of coordinated disinformation. Well, it turns out that the New York Times was forced to admit that they received an off-the-record copy of a study prior to the study being published to use as the basis of their article. 
And they also get the study wrong. But that being said, they literally coordinated with another party to get an advanced copy of something to use as the basis of their story against Project Veritas for the purpose of dif disinformation. They actually did the thing that they're accusing Veritas of. But it's the New York Times and uh, people will slavishly follow whatever they say because it's uh, an old and established newspaper. All media organizations that are the, the major media organizations in existence right now are still operating on credit established 50 and 60 years ago and have been in a steady decline of credibility. However, people hearken back to the times when they believed at least they could trust the news. But with the advent of social media, with the advent of video, with the advent of the ability to instantaneously check what the media is saying, with the advent of experts having access to the same types of platforms that media advisors are, are given access to. For example, a legal expert commenting on the New York Times can now be checked in real time by a legal expert on Twitter, on YouTube, on Facebook, on wherever. They don't have to go through a news organization to get the message out. They, If they have a big enough following, they can just publish their response and talk about why the news organization got it wrong. This has killed the credibility of the mainstream media who enjoyed monolithic access to the American public for decades. Now they don't have it and they're on borrowed time because they're on borrowed credibility, borrowing for from their predecessors. And I would argue they're betters. I think they've gotten sloppier. Uh, however, there's no real way to know just how bad the reporting was back then either. That being said, their credibility is dropping dramatically and it's things like this that lead to that credibility. It's them attacking their competitors, the independent journalists who are out there doing the investigative reporting that we thought major media organizations used to do. They don't do them in the same way anymore and now people like Veritas do and they get attacked when they have a story that doesn't toe the political line of a paper like the New York Times. But here we go. The Times claimed that Project Veritas mounted a campaign during the Trump administration to discredit perceived enemies of President Trump inside the government, which include a planned sting operation against then National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster and attempts to secretly record FBI employees disparage the 45th president, all in coordination with an ex-British spy. No idea why they would need to do this, because we know from released text messages that members of the FBI were openly disparaging the 45th president. That came out as a result of the Russiagate uh, investigations when they found out that the FBI agents who were involved in investigating Trump actively hated Donald Trump and talked about wanting him out of office and working to coordinate to make that happen. This isn't, <laughs> this is not news and it wouldn't have been news even if Project Veritas had broken it. But again, James O'Keefe has vehemently denied any involvement in this because this article from the Times seeks one thing, discredit Project Veritas, and to do so especially in response to the fact that they're losing currently in court. And let me be clear on something. The ultimate outcome of this case will be whatever it will be. Project Veritas has already won. They've already won. Their goal isn't necessarily a victory at the final verdict level here. They're not necessarily going to win a judgment. If they win a judgment, they may not win any money. Who knows? They have to prove those sort of damages out and it would be, it's a long way off. Project Veritas has made a very short term win here. And it's a short term win with long repercussions because they will get to depose and ask questions of New York Times staff under oath. And you have to answer them. And they'll be able to videotape those discussions, those depositions, and they will be able to broadcast them to the world. Something that just doesn't happen very often. 
that's the victory. Discovery against uh, when you're when you're fighting monolithic organizations, and you have the access access to the public. Discovery is victory because the public can then judge for themselves, regardless of what the court says. The public can say, "I trust the New York Times," or "I don't." I trust this executive vice president or I don't. And that's it. It's beautiful. And that's why Veritas has already won this lawsuit. Everything else that happens is gravy for them. And if they end up losing at the judgment stage, if they end up not winning and they have, uh, you know, some legal fees that they pay at the end of the day, they're willing to take that opportunity cost to get to where they are now. Now, of course, they want a judgment. They want that. But if they don't get it, they've already gotten their primary objective. And that is, that is the key when fighting these large organizations. And that is why the New York Times had that anti-slap, why they're very, very mad that they lost that motion to dismiss, which they are appealing, by the way. They do not want discovery. They do not want their internal communications sent to Project Veritas. They do not want their people interviewed by Project Veritas and Project Veritas's lawyers. And they certainly don't want those interviews broadcast to the world to see. They don't want them. So this is, uh, this is big news. And this is why the New York Times is fighting back so hard. The campaign shows the obsession that some of Mr. Trump's allies had about a shadowy deep state trying to blunt his agenda and the links that some were willing to go to try to purge the government of those believed to be disloyal to the president, the Times reported. Of course, the New York Times also had to report over and over that it's unclear whether or not Project Veritas directed it, whether or not Project Veritas even participated in it, whether or not they knew what was going on. It's unclear who funded it, uh, but it doesn't matter because they wrote the article in such a way that the damage is already done. Because other journalists, and this is the cyclical, nasty aspect of modern journalism, is other journalists are using the New York Times articles to take their analysis one step further and have just skipped over the parts where the New York Times says it's unclear what Project Veritas's involvement is, and they flat out say, Project Veritas engaged in this plot to undermine the United States government. There you go. And by the way, why would the government ever need to suppress a free press when they have the New York Times <laughs> running propaganda for them. Because make no mistake, that's what the New York Times and other news organizations are today. We'll be covering this case as it develops and as it continues. Again, I encourage you to check out Viva's video link down below and let me know what you think in the comment section of this video. Until next time, peace. Peace.